Okay. So we'll just do this the hard way. That's not too loud. How's that right there? Is that better? Is that okay? I just need it loud enough to pick up on that. And I think I think that'd be okay there. <clears throat> All right. So Jenny. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. We'll pray, and we're going to get right down into the nitty gritty today, and uh, we're going to break a sweat. We're going to do such a good study here. So let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for your blessings, and thank you, Lord, for all those who have an interest in coming out and just learning more about your word and how we can uh, study, how we can do different things, uh, and just get to know you better. And uh, Lord, I pray that you will help us uh, to use our time wisely. And uh, Lord, just give us the wisdom and strength. Keep those uh, safe that can't be here with us today. And Father, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We left off last time. And I still think that's too loud. You know, I feel like I need to talk louder. I'm pretty much shout you out. Maybe it's just because I'm standing right here. All right. So we left off last time uh, with, we were getting ready to do our study on John 21, if I remember correctly. So go ahead and turn to John 21, and as you're turning there, now we've had a few questions asked already, um, and what I'm going to try to do, once we do this study here, uh, then I'm going to actually go through the questions you all have. We're going to look at those together. All right. Let's see. Yeah. So, any questions from maybe your Bible reading this past week? Continuation of uh, your class you have right now. So, any questions that you have? Maybe one more time, plug them and add to this little section. Yeah, just add it right, right, right to page four. All right, so no other questions? Do you know? Well, if you think of any, let me know. We're going to try to. Uh, deal with some of these here in class and uh, actually do, uh, this is going to be our first study we're going to do here in class together. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this turned on here because we're going to be using the overhead and uh, I've got blue letter Bible pulled up. Alright, so as we start this study, anytime you're going to study God's Word, you need to be a question asker. Uh, you need to be asking some questions to yourself and asking the Lord and, and kind of considering some things. So, in John chapter uh, 21, we're going to look at just three verses. And it says in verse 15, So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Now here's three verses. What significant thing do you see on the surface just in those three verses right away? Repetition. Okay, there's some repetition it looks like. There's a question, answer, command. Yep, question, there's an answer, and then a command given. And there's going to be three questions, there's going to be three answers, there's going to be three commands. And that's what we're going to look at and see 
is this really repetition? If it's repetition, a question we probably should ask is what? Why? Why is it repeating itself? Why? What's the message God has for us? Because every verse, every verse in the Bible is for our learning. It's for our benefit. So we'd have to ask the question, okay, if these things are the same, then why are they repeating themselves? So we need to dig a little bit into it. So let's start off with some questions here. Now I've left you enough space in your notes to where you can actually write and fill these in. Uh, you can just write whatever you want as you're filling in because you're going to answer the questions. Uh, first of all, under the three questions Jesus asked, let's consider the three questions first. What was the first question Jesus asked Peter? Do you love me? Okay, let's think of it specifically. What's it, what's it specifically say there? Love me, love me. Love me, love me. More than these. Yes, love us, thou me more than these. It's all part of the question. So that's the first question that he asked Peter. And that's significant that you see the whole question. We don't want to get too general because then we're going to get lost in our study. So you got to get very specific and say, okay, he asked, lovest thou me more than these? Now, what was the second question Jesus asked Peter in verse 16? Lovest thou me? Okay, love us thou me. That's the question. Now, at first glance, here's letter C. At first glance, what was the difference between the first two questions? And what is significant about this difference? He wasn't asking if Peter loved him more than these things. He just wanted to know if he loved him at all. Okay, so there's one part that's left off in the second question. The first question, he says, Simon, son of Joseph, Love us, thou me, more than these. Okay? And we don't know what the these are. The these can be a whole lot of things. Love us, thou me, more than these other disciples. Love us, thou me, more than these fish. Yeah, because that was his living. Love us, thou me, uh, more than whatever else is there. More than the world. Uh, and then the second time, he just simply asked the question, Love us, thou me. So there is a difference between the two questions. And at first glance... What would you say is significant about that? It's getting more specific. Okay. It's getting a little more specific. You know, basically kind of like it seems on the surface, do you even love me? Do you, do you love me? Not just do you love me more than these, do you love me, period. And so it's getting more specific. So that's what it would look like on the surface. Now, what is the third question in verse 17? Let's <laughs> me. Love us thou me. Okay? So we see a third question. It looks identical to the second question. Now, is there a difference between the second and third question? Huh? Okay, why do you say yes? Okay. Do you know what they are? He's heard this study before. <laughs> that's right. You had that message too. But that's true. There is a difference between the second and third question. And this is where your study is going to get down into it a little bit. And you're going to dig a little deeper. So, let's do a word study here and see what we discover. So, here you have... Let me turn that a little bit so... So we're on blueletterbible.org, and you can, if, if you have a tab or something you want to bring it, feel free to do so. If you want to pull out your phone, uh, you can log in and do it, or you can do it, look at it up here. This is one of the most handy Bible study tools um, that I've come across. Now, I love Strong's Concordance, love the dictionary, love, you know, commentaries. This is kind of a whole lot of things in one little study here. So... I'm going to type in here, I can type in John 21, I can type in, and this is what I usually do if I'm thinking, okay, what's that verse, where's that verse found? And uh, I'm going to say, love us, thou me. Now let's say I don't even remember love us, I just, I can't remember if it's love me, love me, yeah, but I know it's thou me. So I'm going to type in thou me, and it's going to bring up every verse. You'll see this thou and me occurs 2114 times in 762 verses in the king james bible there are 27 exact phrases that are always shown first so i know that's an exact phrase so i scroll down 
to John 21. There they are. Verse 15, 16, and 17. So here are the three verses I'm looking for. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the question. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at a word study. Is there a difference when Jesus said, lovest thou me more than these? And then he said, lovest thou me in verse 16, and then lovest thou me in verse 17. <laughs> What's the word you think we want to focus in on here? Love. Right, lovest. We want to focus in on that word. So, let's, what you do is you go to tools, and then there's going to be a list of things come up here. It's going to say, I don't know if you can see that. Let me expand this here a little bit. I'll make it a little bit easier. Okay, you get a list here. It says in the linear. That's an in the linear Greek and Hebrew, you know, New, or a Testament, Old Testament, or New Testament. It gives you Bibles, cross references, it's got some commentaries, dictionaries. But the one I always use is in the linear because that's where you're going to find your Strong's Concordance. So you just scroll over to it, click on it, and here's what it's going to do. It's going to give you. The actual Greek. This is in the Texas Receptus Greek. So right there it says Texas Receptus. And this is what it says in the Greek. Now that's not going to help us a whole lot, is it? <laughs> it's Greek to me. So we go down. It says, and right here you'll see going down the left hand side. So when they had dined, what you're going to see here. It's going to give you the English. The G3767. Is actually the Strong's reference number. So that means the G means it's in the New Testament, so it's Greek. So it's going to be in the Greek section of the Strong's Concordance. So if you have your book, I could pull up G3767, and it's going to be the exact same thing I find right here. It gives you the actual Greek word that's used there, and then it gives you a pronunciation. And if I wanted to see or hear how that word's pronounced, which I usually don't, don't really care. Mm, tells you how to pronounce the Greek. Okay? Now, the way I find the definition, now I don't care about so. So it says, So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, up, oh, there it is. G25 is the word I'm looking for. It's agape. Or agape. Alright, so now I click on that and I scroll down. This right here is significant. This word is found in the Texas Receptus 142 times in uh, 40 unique forms. The Texas Receptus is what we use. Now, that over here, the LXX, that's the Septuagint. That is, if you want to look up the, the Greek Old Testament, this same word is found there 217 times, and it's a little, that's a little more in depth what, what we want to do with right now, because that can be a little more confusing. So, there's something very important. If I want to find a good way to define this word, there's a couple things I can do. And this is the way I always suggest people, if you're going to do a study, you have to remember when the translators translated this into English, they didn't use the same word every time they translated the Greek word. So when they translated agapeo, they didn't translate that word the same every single time. So they used different words in the English language to give a better sense of what it was they were talking about. Let me give you some examples here. Now right here it tells you the KJV translates Strong's G25 in the following manner. It's translated love 135 times. It's translated beloved seven times. Now, there are also words in the Greek that are very similar to this. Agape is one. And because agapeo is just a, a form of that. And matter of fact, agape, just so you know, uh, 1 Corinthians 13 is where we find that word over and over. And what's the word that's used there? Charity. But that's the word. It's a, it's a branch of this word here. It's not the same word, but it's just the form of the same word. All right, so now what is a good definition? Well, right here is Strong's definition. 
he starts giving you a little bit of definition here. Uh, you can find Thayer's Greek lexicon and get read through you know that all that there. Just kind of try to get a good idea. But what I do is I do two things. I look at what Strong's definition is, and then I look to see okay, here are the different verses that this word is found in. And it gives you every single verse that that word is found in. And every time you see, like, Mark 12, 30, it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. That's the exact same word. That word love is the exact same word. So, I can go down through and see this, or I can just simply look back up here at the top. I know right here there's two ways it's translated. It's love or beloved. Now, I want to get a little more specific. Since it's a form of agape, that's a special kind of love. This is a love that basically God has for us. Uh, let me see if I fired. I don't think I'm John. Yep, see John 3, 16? For God, so what? Love. There it is. Love the world. This is the exact same word. So what is Peter, what's Jesus asking Peter? In that first question. Do you love me like I love you? Yeah. Do you love me the same way I love you? And then he asked him something else with it. More than these other things. So that's a pretty specific question he's asking me. Now, how does that change with the second use of the word? Well, let's go back here. <clears throat> And let me just scroll down a little bit. And see, right now we're still on verse 15. I'm scrolling down. Da, 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 da. I see there's verse 16. I do the same thing. Click on tools in the linear. And I'm going to see. I'm just curious. Is this a different word? Is it the same word? You know, what's going on here with this? So I scroll down to it. He says them to me again the second time. Sign the son of Genesis. Agape, okay, so it's the same G25, same word. So there had to be something significant with the more than these. There was a reason he didn't ask him that the second time. So that's significant when we're looking at our study. But then let's continue with the third question that Jesus asked him. And let's scroll down here and get to verse 17. All right, he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas. Uh, what do we see there? Philea. Philea. Not the same word, is it? Now, what do you think Philea means? Brotherly. Brotherly, Brotherly like right. Philadelphia. It's like, now why would Jesus ask Peter that? He asked him the first time, basically, do you love me the same way I love you more than this other stuff? Second time, do you love me the same way I love you? Third time, he says, basically, do you love me like a brother? You know, so there's a significant difference in the question there. Now, why would he ask him that the third time? Well, you have to study the rest of the verses here and see how uh, Peter responds. And if you want to see, um, here's a good biblical usage of it. This is some good definitions right here. Treat affectionately, kindly, befriend, uh, you know, to prove of. It's basically a friendly, you know, brotherly type love is what that means. Alright, so let's go back to our next question. I don't know how I have this order here. <clears throat> so I have the question here. Number two, how do the last two questions relate to the first question? What do you think? There's no really right or wrong answer. We're just kind of thinking through this, you know, out loud together. It's all about love. Okay, it's all about love. But what's he seem to be doing? Is he, at first, he, he starts off and it's almost like very, he says, do you love me the same way I love you more than this other stuff? Then he says, do you love me the same way I love you? And then he just says, do you love me like a brother? So what does it seem to be doing to you in the questions? 
I think he's restoring Peter. Okay, he is restoring Peter because remember how many times Peter denied the Lord? Three times. So this is significant. He's asking him three times, but the answer is... His response is significant also, the way that he's responding. Yes. Now see, this we don't see a whole lot of difference here, but this the difference between the second and third question is going to be more significant. We're going to see the difference once we start looking at Peter's answers. Okay, so let's go on here to the three answers that Peter gave. I'm going to take my notebook up here. All right, so what was the first answer that Peter gave? Okay, what's the full answer? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Now, there's got to be something with how Peter is responding here with the word love. That's That would be what, oops, that's what I would think. So let's go back to that verse in verse 16. And let's see, I'm sorry, is that right? Uh, or my verse 15. 15, my fault. Uh, and we're going to pull that up and see, see what it is here that Peter's actually answering. Okay, so I'm going to do this, lovest thou me more than these. He saith unto him, yea, Lord. Now remember what he asked him. Do you agapeo me more than these? Here's Peter's answer. Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I... What's the answer right there? Well, I phileo thee. Yeah. Now, is that what the Lord asked him? No. But you know, this is a, a good... If you ever teach a Bible class and you have students and stuff like that, uh, and I see this all the time in church, people hear... It's like Jesus said this over and over again. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You ever wonder why he said that? It's like people a lot of times, if they are not tuned in spiritually to hear things, they're only going to hear to the level that they're spiritually capable of hearing it. No matter what it is. Uh, some people who are you know, more mature, they're going to get the meat the preacher or the Sunday school teacher is throwing out. They're going to get that thing. Man, that was good. Other people, it's going to go right by and so the Lord here is asking Peter some questions. He asked him a very spiritual question to start with. What's Peter do? He gives him a very fleshly answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Lord, I love you just like my brother. But that's not who the Lord is. He's a friend that sticks closer to a brother, but he's more than a brother. And so Peter doesn't get yet what's being asked. So that's significant that he, asked, he answers and says, yes, Lord, I fillet with you. So what was the second answer that Peter gives? Yeah, Lord, I know it's time to go. Okay. Here it looks like the exact same thing. You know, so at first glance, we're going to, we look at it and say, okay, well, there's no difference. I mean, those are word for word are exactly the same. Well, let's see if the word love is exactly the same. Let's see if Peter's actually catching on here and he's getting it. All right, so answer the second time, I was, he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I, what do you answer again? Phileo thee. That's, he's still hearing the Lord asking this question. Peter missed the agapeo. He missed the more than these in the first question. And now he just missed the agapeo. He didn't hear that. He's still hearing it on the bottom level, phileo. Okay, so now the Lord asking, we've done this word study, and you can jot down any notes you want there as you go, but uh, what is the third answer that Peter gave? Now, if I'm going too fast for you to write stuff down, then just let me know and we'll slow down here. All right. Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest all of thee. That's right. He said, he, and notice what his response was after it's, Jesus said, Simon, son of Jonas. And remember what the Lord asked him this time? He said, Phileo thou me. He actually gets down to Peter's level and asks him the question that Peter had been answering. And basically saying, do you even Phileo thou me? And notice what happened to Peter. He didn't just answer this time. What's it say there? He was grieved 
And Peter has heard this same question three times, but it's not been the same question. It's been a different question every time. But that's not what that's not where spirit, or Peter was spiritually. He kept hearing the same question over and over again. So he's hearing, he's grieved because he asked him the third time. And Peter is about, I think, to make a connection here. Okay, the Lord's asking three times if I love him. And that's going to, I mean, he just recently denied the Lord three times. And did that have an impact on Peter? Yeah. What did he do after he did it? He went out and wept bitterly. I mean, we're talking about a grown man. This is a fisherman, uh, you know, somebody who's strong, somebody who uh, would be a man of men. And he goes out and weeps bitterly. So that apparently had a huge impact on him. And now, three times the Lord's asking him a question. And now he's grieved because of this third question. So, here's Peter's answer. Now here, and this is what, when you break this down and see how it is in the Greek, let me go down through here slowly. He's, this is verse 17. He saith unto him, the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, notice that right there, phileo, but that's not what the Lord asked all three times, was it? This is telling us, this is what Peter heard all three times. He said, phileo thou me, and then... Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, and there's the word again, phileo thou me. And that's when he says, you Lord, thou knowest all things. Um, so he goes through all this. So there's, a, there's some significant things here in all this. But as Lane mentioned, this is Peter's restoration here. He's restoring him back to, uh, he was one of the head disciples. And he's restoring him back to that point. So, that's not all these verses say. There's more to these verses. So, we need to consider, if we're going to do a study, we saw the three questions. The questions were all different. We saw three answers Peter gave, and they were all basically the same. And that was what he heard spiritually. He was on a, basically a, a baby-level Christian. And remember, do you remember what the Lord told Peter what to do when he was converted? Strengthen thy brother. He is when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. And you know, when you look at 1 Peter and 2 Peter, the books of 1 Peter and 2 Peter, those books are tremendous books about strengthening other believers. And there's going to be something significant about that with what we see here, the three commands that the Lord gave. All right, so... What is the first command that he gives? That the Lord gives Peter. Feed my lambs. Okay, he says, feed my lambs. That's the first one. Now, we're not looking for anything significant yet. We're looking in the English. So let's see what we see here on the surface. And then we'll dig into it a little bit and see if there's any difference with it. All right, so what was the second command? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Now, right away... What's the difference between the first and second question? Lambs and sheep. But what's the difference between lambs and sheep? Okay, lambs are babies. Sheep are more mature. They're the adult ones. Okay, so there's a little bit of difference we see on the surface there already. Now what would be, we're going to do a word study here in a second. But what's the third command? Feed my sheep. It seems like it's the exact same one as the second command. But did the Lord ask the same question all three times? No, he asked three different questions. So my guess would be, if I'm doing a study here, my guess would be he's giving three different answers. Even though it looks like what answer two or three commands, I'm sorry. He's command number two and command number three. It looks like on the surface that they're the same. But let's dig a little bit here and see if they actually are. So there's there's the words. We know lambs and sheep are different. So we, we can look those up if we want to. But I would say there, and we're going to go ahead and do that. I would say there's probably something significant with the word feed. Now, I'm, we're not going to, we can dig into this word feed a little bit. Um, 
to where you can, I've done this study a long time ago, so. Uh, okay, he says, Thou knowest that I love thee, he saith unto him, here it is, feed my lambs. So the word lambs is arnion, and so that's what he's talking about lambs, which if you look that up, it's going to be, you're probably going to see it says baby sheep somewhere. Uh, a little lamb, yeah. So it's just, basically it's just some baby sheep. All right, so nothing really earth-shattering about that, but let's look at the word feed. The word here is bosco. Okay, now, we don't know what the word is in the other ones yet, but bosco here means to feed or keep. Now, this actually, if you dig a little bit more into this, this has to do with actually feeding, nurturing. So like, uh, this is, if you're gonna nurture a little lamb, what are you gonna feed the little lamb? Yeah. Milk. So you're gonna give this lamb milk. And that's what it means is you're gonna keep it, you're gonna feed it, make sure it's getting its nourishment for growth. And so you're gonna give that lamb milk, okay? Um, so the word that's used there is Bosco. And let's back up here. Let's go down to the next answer. And it's just stuff like this that you kind of get into to do a little word study, dig a little bit deeper, see what's similar, see what's different. And this is where you can really start like, man, there was a whole lot more in those three verses than I thought there were. Uh, on the surface, it just looked very basic and repetitious, but there's a whole lot more meat there. Um, all right, he says unto him, here's his answer, feed my sheep. Now, what's the word for feed? Yeah, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, wall, main over, or something like that. But anyway, it's a whole different word. All right, now the word for sheep, the word is different, which is what we expected because sheep are more mature animals. Let's see what sheep says there, if there is a difference. Um, what that word would be, okay, it's just using it as sheep in general, could be some cattle, horses, you know, whatever. Uh, it's talking about basically just any type of flock that you have or herd. Okay, so let's look at the word feed again, see what this word, qualmeno, says. Now, notice the KJV, how it translates this word. Six times it translates the word feed. Four times it translates the word rule. And then, talking one time, it talks about feeding cattle. So, if it's going to translate this word rule, let's look down here at the English definition. And notice what some of the definitions are and how this is used. To rule, govern. Uh, you're going to, you are still going to nourish, but you're going to supply some different things. There's, there's a whole different meaning to this word feed. So he says in the first answer, I want you to nourish my little children. You know, basically is what he's saying. I want you to nourish my little children and make sure that they are getting milk from the word. Second answer, he says, I want you to rule and govern. I want you and remember, there's different ways that the Bible teaches to rule and govern. Setting example, uh, you know, instructing them, uh, being, uh, whenever they go astray, you need to rebuke them. You need to do these things. That's to rule and govern. You're going to be the leader. So his responsibility just got greater. The responsibility went, the first one was uh, a basic responsibility. It's like, let's say somebody's new to the church and they're going to start teaching a class. Am I going to put them in charge of teaching an adult class if they're a baby Christian? No. Probably, if, and depending on where they're at, probably going to start them in a, a child's class. You know, uh, And then they need to be more spiritually mature than the children and then help those children grow. And hopefully they're going to grow more in the process. So, But the second responsibility here is to rule or govern his more adult sheep. And let's see what the third response here is, his third command. All right, 
right, so we get down here to the bottom to his command. He's Ethan. Okay, here's the third command. Now, notice the word sheep. It's the exact same word as the previous verse. So there's no difference there. It's, it's definitely talking about adult sheep. Now, the word feed, what do you notice about the word feed? It's the same as the first one, not the second. So he's given him three different answers here. The first time, he says, I want you to nourish and I want you to make sure that you're feeding my baby Christian, my little lambs. And so you're going to give them milk. The second time, he says, I want you to make sure that you're going to rule and govern, set an example, and take care of my more mature sheep. The third time, he says, I want, we go back to the nourishing. How do you <laughs> nourish adults? Are they going to be satisfied with milk all the time? Get the meat. They need some meat. He says, you need to nourish them. So this is a higher responsibility. In order to give somebody meat, you need to have some meat yourself to be able to give to other people. So he says, I want you to nourish them and make sure you're taking care of them. So here in these three verses, we saw three questions that seemed to be almost the same thing, but we found there were three different questions altogether. We saw three answers, and those three answers were basically the same, and that was what Peter was hearing because of his spiritual level, his spiritual condition. Then we see three commands the Lord gave him, and notice each command, the responsibility kept increasing, kept increasing. And what the Lord just did here with Peter is he just restored him back to the place where he was. And then if we go on through the passage, Peter does the same thing you and I do. What did he just do after this? What did he say? Yeah, he's basically, that's verse 18. You know, he looks around and sees John. He's like, well, what's he going to do? <laughs> and Jesus basically says, you know, is that any of your business? <laughs> you take care of you and worry about you. Don't worry about everybody else. And the Bible tells us over in many places, it says if we compare ourselves with ourselves, we are not what? Wise. Wise. That's a foolish thing to do is compare ourselves with other people. It's like, well, you know, I'm out here serving God and doing this and nobody else is serving me. Everybody else is sitting at home. Why are they, if they're just going to sit in the pew, I'm just going to sit in the pew. God says you're a fool because you're comparing yourself with other people, other Christians. And who are we supposed to compare ourselves to? Jesus Christ. Now, are you ever going to attain that mark? No. So we need to press toward that mark, as Paul said. So anyway, that's how we do a little Bible study there. Hopefully that helps you. And this is kind of what we're going to do a little bit, dig a little bit. I'm going to let you all ask the questions. This one here, I asked the questions to kind of give you some guidance. But now with the questions we had already and questions that come up in this class, I want you all to start thinking, okay, what can we look at? How can we examine this? So again, if you have a phone or tablet, something you want to bring, a laptop, feel free to bring it. And we'll hook it up. Otherwise, we'll just use mine and, and we'll look at it all together at the same time. Um, but if you want to do a little bit of independent study while we're all studying together, that's fine. But that's what we're going to do with this class. So we're going to stop right here, take a break uh, for about five minutes, and then we'll pick up again here in just a moment.